Ezekiel chapter 12 and verse 1, The word of the Lord also came unto me, saying, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see and see not. They have ears to hear and hear not, for they are a rebellious house. They could study their father's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, but they won't because they're a rebellious house, and they will be punished for that both nationally and individually. Once Satan appears as the false Christ, the three Christian nations, which symbolize all twelve tribes, that is to say Ephraim, Manasseh, and Judah, will be plucked up by the roots, as you can read of in Daniel chapter 7. Those three horns that are plucked up by the roots whenever you see the little horn appear, that's Satan appearing as the false Christ. Therefore, thou son of man, prepare thee stuff for removing, and remove by day in their sight, and thou shalt remove from thy place to another place in their sight. It may be they will consider, though they be a rebellious house. Then shalt thou bring forth thy stuff by day in their sight as stuff for removing, and thou shalt go forth at even in their sight, as they that go forth into captivity, because that's what's going to happen. In the future sense, the captivity is to Babylon of the end times, that is to say confusion, a captivity of the mind. Dig you through the wall in their sight and carry out thereby. This is what Zedekiah would do when Nebuchadnezzar, the type of Antichrist, comes to Jerusalem to burn it. And in the future sense, Satan will appear in Jerusalem to kill a third spiritually, with that fire, smoke, and brimstone which issues out of the mouths of his army. The Chaldeans, historically, were a type of that locust army, Satan's angels that are cast out of heaven with him at the beginning of that five-month-long hour of temptation. In their sight shalt thou bear it upon thy shoulders, and carry it forth in the twilight. Thou shalt cover thy face, that thou see not the ground, for I have set thee for a sign unto the house of Israel. And Zedekiah will have his eyes gouged out by the king of Babylon. What does that mean symbolically in the futurist sense? They'll be killed spiritually at the sixth trumpet and absolutely spiritually blinded from that point on. Unless they repent, and I feel many will because of what God will say through his election when the Holy Spirit speaks through them. And I did so as I was commanded. I brought forth my stuff by day as stuff for captivity. And in the even, I dig through the wall with mine hand, and I brought it forth in the twilight, and I bear it upon my shoulder in their sight. And in the morning came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, hath not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said unto thee, What doest thou? Say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, This burden, this oracle, better translated, concerneth the prince in Jerusalem, Zedekiah, that is to say, and all the house of Israel that are among them. In the futurist sense, if you're a Christian, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You're part of Israel. Christ even calls himself Israel in the book of Isaiah. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and therefore Israel, the spiritual Israel, the true Israel, is Christianity. Say, I am your sign. Like as I have done, so shall it be done unto them. They shall remove and go into captivity. The captivity of the end times is a captivity of confusion, of deception. And if you have that seal of God in your forehead, you can't be deceived because you know what will happen during that five-month-long hour of temptation. And you know what's going on in the world now, the four hidden dynasties of the Kenites formulating that one-world political system that will not emerge until the beginning of that five-month-long hour of temptation. And the prince that is among them shall bear upon his shoulder in the twilight and shall go forth. They shall dig through the wall to carry out thereby. He shall cover his face that he see not the ground with his eyes, disguised, in other words. My net also will I spread upon him, and he shall be taken in my snare, in God's snare, God's trap for those who will not listen, and I will bring him to Babylon, bring him into confusion, because he refused to study the word of God, to the land of the Chaldeans, yet shall he not see it, because his eyes will be gouged out by the king of Babylon, that has a spiritual meaning as well, the mark of the beast, 
Though he shall die there in Babylon, in confusion, dying spiritually is what we're talking about. Remember in the second verse what God said, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see and see not. We're talking spiritually here. They have ears to hear and hear not, for they are a rebellious house. They've got better things to do than study the word of God, so they're going to die spiritually. They're going to be deceived by the Antichrist. And whenever the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet, he's going to say to them, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And I will scatter toward every wind all that are about him to help him, and all his bands, and I will draw out the sword after them. And they shall know that I am the Lord, not Satan or anybody else, but our Heavenly Father, when I shall scatter them among the nations and disperse them in the countries. In the ultimate spiritual sense at the seventh trumpet, this is being cast out of the presence of the true Christ into the outer darkness. And as Christ said, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But I will leave a few men of them from the sword, from the famine, and from the pestilence, that they may declare all their abominations among the heathen whither they come. And they shall know that I am the Lord, that our Father is God, not Satan. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, eat thy bread with quaking, and drink thy water with trembling, and with carefulness. Be very careful that what you are partaking of is the bread of life, that is to say the true word of God, and the water of life, the living water, not Satan's cheap fabric imitation, Satan's deception, the bitter water, and that bread made with human dung that we read of earlier in the book of Ezekiel. And say unto the people of the land, Thus saith the Lord God of the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Now this includes everyone that is inhabiting Jerusalem and of the land of Israel. They shall eat their bread with carefulness and drink their water with astonishment that her land may be desolate from all that is therein because of the violence of all them that dwell therein. The violence, the idolatry, the deception. This speaks also of the famine for hearing the word of the Lord that brings about the deception. And the cities that are inhabited shall be laid waste, and the land shall be desolate. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, not the desolator, that is to say Satan, but our Heavenly Father. You shall know that he is God, and none other. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth? They've been saying the end of the world is going to happen for a hundred years. It's never going to happen. They have eyes to see, but they won't see that we're in the generation of the fig tree, the final generation. It's fast approaching, that five-month-long hour of temptation. All it's going to take is for Satan and his angels to be cast out of heaven unto the earth, and then it begins. Tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, The days are at hand, and the effect of every vision, every prophecy, shall come to pass before this generation ends. For there shall be no more any vain vision nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord, our Father says, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass, and so it always shall. As it is written, so it shall be. The very word of God, we're reading it now. It shall be no more prolonged, for in your days, O rebellious house, it shall happen to this generation. Will I say the word, and will perform it, saith the Lord God. Again the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesieth of the times that are afar off. Guess again. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God.